You're watching Chewing the Cud with Mist Kinsman and Mike Benyon Rowe. My mate Billy has got a 10 foot bomb. Oh, oh, hello there. Welcome to Chewing the Cud. Billy Eilish. No, not Billy Eilish. No. She definitely doesn't have a 10 foot one, no. 10 foot what though? <laughs> no one's got a 10 foot. Well, he did until he showed it to the girl next door. She hit it with a rake because <laughs> she thought it was a snake and now it's only four foot four. Which is still impressive. <laughs> oh, he's off. <laughs> what have you got for us today, Mike? Well, today I've got the evidence of something we've been doing wrong for years. And then we're going to do something wonderful in Crafty Queens. That'll be a stretch. <laughs> I'm not talking about your backside. <laughs> a yawning hippo. <laughs> and we even have a game to play in our game of the week. But on screen now, you can see our social media contact info. Just look for at the CUD TV. And as the names of people who've dropped us a line go on the bottom of the screen, like that one, we go over to Mist and the Showbiz. <laughs> So, are you ready for the show bits? I am. Right, well. With the maxi pad. With, with my maxi pad, indeed. Uh, let, me, let me just open up technical difficulties. Bear with, oh, bear fuck. with. Right, so. Remember we were talking about Sam Smith and this uh, new project called The Pink House? I am aware of that, yeah. Guess what it turns out it is? Go on. It's a podcast. Oh, well. Like every Tom, Dick and Harry celebrity at the moment, they're, they're coming out with a podcast. Okay. Um, which, yeah. you know, actually, I quite enjoy a podcast because I've always been a fan of radio and uh, this little chat kind of thing that's going on as a trend in the world. Quite good. But they've had their first guest. Okay. Well, one, one of their first uh, early guests. Um, Elliot Page, you know, from uh, Elliot the... Um, Page. Love yeah, Elliot Page. From the Umbrella Academy. Mm -hmm. And actually, they've been talking about their experience coming out as trans. And, and rather than discussing the, the trials and tribulations and all the, the mm -hmm. horrors that trans people have to go through, they've actually been reflecting on how they feel... It's been about four years since they came out as trans, on all the positive, small things. Um, just even just being able to go out and not wear a shirt is just like any bloke would do mm -hmm. in the hot sun. And I the, any bloke. Well, some of us shouldn't, but many people do. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> not to body shame anyone. If if you feel confident and proud, go ahead and do. I, I'm not wearing it. I'm not taking off clothing in public. Do you know how difficult it is walking around like this, clothed, and not inciting erections everywhere I go? It's difficult, man. Hmm. The delusion. Uh, but yes, for I, I, Elliot I, I, Page, that's a new experience yeah. um, as, as a man to be able to do that. And it's just one of those small little things that is very gender affirming mm -hmm. and something to celebrate. And they were reflecting on lots of little things. So if you've got the chance, check out The Pink House and listen to that conversation. Mm -hmm. I actually quite, quite like the, this story because um, Paris, who's been on the show, um, is trans mask. And I got to take him to his first man only bar. Oh. So we went out for a pint, and he's like, he's like, oh, what are you doing? It's like, oh, I've never been to a man-only bar. And I went, should we go now? Right? And watching Paris sit down in this man-only space and go, I've been in a man-only space. This is a... It was so brilliant, not just because he was enjoying himself and mm -hmm. experiencing the eagle um, with the videos, um, but to be <laughs> part of that experience as well, it's like, I, I turned and said, thank you so much for that. letting me be part of that. It was beautiful. So, yeah, I can see a lot of trans joy happening, and I think we should celebrate that more rather than just focusing on the, the negative stuff because there's so yeah. much in the world. Yeah, I can understand that. Yeah. So, do you know your rappers? I, I do. I can tell you quite quickly whether it's a, a Snickers or a, or a Milky Way. I'm talking about the music genre. Oh, like Little Nas X. Yeah. Biggie like, Smalls. Yeah, that oh, end there, of the there's, market. There's, there's, a, <laughs> <laughs> there's two that won't be... Won't be. So Little Nas X and Biggie Smalls. They're very similar in the fact that they're both rappers. Well, you might have to add another rapper to your lexicon. This is oh, the rapper NLE Chopper. Oh, well, already intrigued. <laughs> I know, it's quite a name, isn't it? Well, unfortunately... <laughs> Whoa, hello. Yeah, quite quite a handsome man. You know what you know those shoulders need? What? My ankles. Well, I'm afraid to burst your bubble. You can do more than burst my bubble. <laughs> Not our side of the fence. Oh. 
However, because this gentleman does a lot of um, saucy music videos mm -hmm. and is very comfortable with their own body and uh, showing themselves off in a sexual way, mm -hmm. Um, they've also done a very raunchy and fun video that you should check out called Slut Me Out 2. Okay. I think you'd rather enjoy that one. Is that Slut Me Out 2 as in As Well or the sequel? Uh, as Well, I believe. Okay. I haven't seen I haven't seen Slut Me Out 1, no. which does sound like uh, one of those kind of videos I used to buy <laughs> in, a, in a very dubious DVD store. Um, anyway, because they do these very raunchy kind of videos and are very comfortable with showing off their masculine beauty mm -hmm. they are quite often accused of being gay okay. they get lots of people in the rap community and people who are fans of that kind of music which is to, to be fair to be said usually quite homophobic mm -hmm. and quite misogynistic and all that kind of, well this guy as an ally is really setting the bar because for all of these comments that do come up on their videos, mm -hmm. on Twitter, etc., they are very, very good at putting them down mm. and saying, no, that's that's not my side of the fence. I, I am a straight person. But that would not be a problem. Mm -hmm. There is no issue with that. Uh, they are actually very vocal at being able to say, no, I'm a heterosexual man, but without putting down the homosexual community or any of the LGBT community, really. Yes. Um, they are actually quite an advocate and they are very keen to perform Slut Me Out 2 um, at the next Pride event that they can. OK, I have got a spare ticket to Manchester Pride. <laughs> they can come along. <laughs> they can... It's not a VIP ticket, but they can come and storm the stage or something. That's fine. <laughs> well, you can look, but you can't touch. Unless they give me consent to touch, in which case I'm allowed. That's what the judge said. <sighs> right, OK, moving on to our next story. Uh -huh. um, we do talk a lot, because I know that you're a fan of Bridgerton. I do like Bridgerton. I mm -hmm. like, I like a, a, an 18th century man in, in clothes. And... It's the tight trousers and the wet shirts. It's not even the tight trousers. It's the fact that everything frames their groin. Mm -hmm. So, like, the, the coat cuts out there and everything's a package, and it's like, hello. So... Desperate. Um, anyway, yes, bro. <laughs> I know I'm not one to talk really, am I? Anyway, so the thing with Bridgerton, uh, as we have discussed before, mm -hmm. um, they've not, even though it's supposed to be a raunchy Edwardian kind of period, is it Edwardian? I think it's Edwardian. Anyway, Georgian. Georgian. Let's Georgian. go with George. No, it is Georgian. Because King George is on the throne. Oh, OK, then. Um, I haven't actually watched it. It doesn't interest me at all. Um, anyway, You've not watched it? I've actually not You've watched not it. Watched I talk about Bridgerton all the time, and I've not actually with watched tops it. Up, thrusting around, like, sweaty and going, oh, no. And I was, I've got so many things on my watch list, and, and I'm, I'm very busy, busy with my own little the, projects. Replace the porn. <sighs> Just one of the, the hours of porn that you watch, replace it with Bridgerton. Hours of porn. I'm lucky if I get through three minutes. It's a quick train. <laughs> anyway, one of the problems that I am aware of with Bridgerton is that um, for all its raunchiness, mm -hmm. not much queer representation uh, not. openly. Mm -hmm. um, and we know in season three that they've started to introduce that. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, I believe it's Benedict Bridgerton that's started to have a bit of a queer awakening. Mm -hmm. Well... Now the lesbians get their turn. Okay. Uh, towards the end of season three, I know it's teased, but in season four, it's definitely going to be confirmed. We've got Francesca Bridgerton. Okay. And um, they have had a bit of a slow burn in terms of the storyline of their sexual way, so much so that people have been considering whether she might be a, a representation of the asexual community. Okay. But they got married to... Um, that's Hannah Dodd there who plays her. They got married to John Sterling at the end of season three. At the beginning of season four... Not watched the end of season three yet, but thanks. Well, this is the news. It's not about spoilers. It's the news. Coming in season four... Mm -hmm. and, and please close your ears if you're worried about spoilers... She may be having a sexual awakening, not with John, her husband, but with his cousin. Okay. Michaela. 
Oh. Mm. So there might be a little bit of girl-on-girl -girl action coming up in, Bris in um, Bridgerton. OK, that'd be good. And that's everything from the showbiz this week. Thanks for that, Mist. So nice to know that I don't have to watch any more of Bridgerton. I'll just come out telling me all about it. You're welcome. But stick around, as next it's Mike in the Buzz. You're watching Chewing the Cud with Mist and Mike. Now, we're going to go into the deep, dark, dank, disgusting, dripping parts of the internet with Mike and the Buzz. <laughs> A tablet? Give me a tablet? Oh, my tablet. We're looking at the dirty parts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so he's asking to connect to the train Wi-Fi. Um, so, <laughs> are you going on holiday this year? I keep asking you this question. You keep saying no. No, I, I'm too, too busy. I've got D&D &D projects to deal with. You're too busy to go away for a weekend. I'm far, far, I'm a very important person. Just because they say Aya when you come to the clap clinic doesn't mean you're a special person. <laughs> I'm loved. Uh -huh. Loved. Uh, on your own. Um, well, it's a story about a woman who sent her parents away for their anniversary mm -hmm. um, to Hawaii, right, to a luxury resort. Well, they just fed up of them. Uh, no, it's a happy anniversary. Mm. We've got you a gift, a, a gift of a trip to Hawaii. Okay. It's quite pleasant, right? It's, it's a nice thing. I, I don't have a good relationship with my parents. No, well, sending people on holiday is a lovely thing to do. It is a nice yeah. thing to do. She's regretting it, though. And this entire trip, she's had nothing but text messages back, and she's asking people, is she the arsehole? Because she wants to never send them on holiday again. Because all she's getting is abuse because of the cost of things. So, yeah. Cheapest meal was $40, which is about £39. Right? So expensive. Why have you sent us here? We can't afford this. Right? Thousands of dollars of trip. And it's just, this is expensive. That's expensive. That's no fun. What did you send us here for? Hmm. What are your thoughts? I do think that it is possibly inappropriate to send people somewhere that might be a wonderful and lovely gift. Mm hmm but if it's more about how much you've given rather than their capacity to enjoy it or something that they would actually like, mm -hmm. um, because if they are genuinely... That, if you haven't given them a budget to enjoy as well... Like, game shows, mm -hmm. they don't just give them the holiday, they do give them a, a wadge of money uh -huh. to go on holiday with. So if you sent them somewhere to be ostentatious about how much you've given mm -hmm. them to somewhere they deliberately can't enjoy because economically they are precluded from enjoying it. But it does depend on whether they are actually economically precluded from no, or they the are thing. just she, stingy. They are able to pay for it. Yeah. Right. So she's, she's paid for the trip. They wanted to go. Her, she's surprised them by paying for the trip for them. They were going to go anyway. And the, all they've done is complain about the cost of things. So it, it kind of puts that sudden spin on it, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so I it said, could go both ways is what I'm it, saying. It could be, yeah, yeah, yeah. But this is very much a case of that they're just sending shocked emojis, right? Because, oh, it's cheaper at home. So what she said is, the next time I'm sending you to Arkansas then. Well, are they just... Are they actually complaining? or Because just going, wow, 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 exclamation, exclamation, isn't necessarily a complaint. It could just be the shock of it. So one or two, we get that, but it's a, a continual tirade. Mm -hmm. And I'm surprised I got away saying Arkansas. <laughs> or in Arkansas. It could have been Arkansas. Arkansas. They're just very northern. No, oh, we're off to Arkansas. Arkansas is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they, they were sending lots of messages about, well, you know, you've sent us with this excursion. We don't want to do that excursion. Well, I've paid for it. You don't have to do it. And, and so it became a bit of an ungrateful spin. Yeah, as I, as I said, like mm -hmm. it, sometimes it's not about being ungrateful. It is about you've really made... It depends. It'd be the ins and outs of the conversation, really, yeah. and having a look at the detail. Mm -hmm. But actually, I, I could potentially have a bit of sympathy with that because I'm, I'm very used to people... I, I don't celebrate birthdays mm -hmm. or Christmases because of... I really dislike presents that are more about the person who's giving the presents. 
uh, it, it's it put me off for life uh, okay. of that sort of thing. So I just don't do I don't do that again. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's the last time I buy you something lovely for Christmas. Then. <laughs> um, moving on. Mm -hmm. You've been doing something wrong for years. I never do anything wrong. I'm absolutely perfect in everything I do. Practically perfect, like Mary Poppins. Why do you lie on the show? <laughs> I've got an image to protect. <laughs> and that image is a lie. Uh-huh, it's a big old lie. Right, OK, are you ready? Go on. Uh, which one do you want? Ooh. This is a Sophie's choice, this. Ooh, giant strobes. That's the wrong choice. Right, do not open them because you're about to open them wrong. Why? How do you open them? You should get a pair of scissors. No. Okay, and this is the, there's been a, the shown the way of opening up Haribo. Okay. That not only means that you can get into the sweeties, but it makes the pack resealable as well. Oh, who reseals the packet of sweets? You eat the lot. I'm not saying anything. Not saying a word. That's a setup for an insult, right? That would be fat shaming, and then I'd be in all sorts of trouble, so I'm not doing it. I saw your trick. Um, no, so this is this is how you open them with the little tabby thing. The little tabby, that's just to hang it on the. Uh -huh. But so, according to TikTok, right? Oh, TikTok, the source according of all TikTok, truth. Right, what you do is you separate out the little tabby thing. Uh huh. Okay, and then you pull down the middle. And it just splits the bag in half. One second. One second. Right, so you get you get like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right? No, no, no. You see, you went before shown. Okay. Well, you showed right. me how to do so it properly, split, then. So you split the tab. Oh, okay. you split the tab. And then you pull it down like this. <gasps> oh! And then you've got a little bag to eat out of. Okay. And then when you've, when you've finished, what you do, what you do, is you put the little tabby thing back through the hole. Mm-hmm. Okay. And it becomes resealable as a bag of sweets. How oh, good's that? I'm still you've, confused you've, by the idea of a of it. <laughs> I'm just going to eat the sweet. But yeah. Mm -hmm. ah, and if you, mm. like Miss, you're just going to sit there munching your face with a bag of Haribo and not care about diabetes, why not share that with us at The Could TV on social media? And that brings us to our story of the week. Now, I'm going to stop eating them now. Do I have to? Yes. Jammy Dodgers. Oh, we've got some of those to eat as well. We have got some Jammy Dodgers, but they've made a divergence. Divergence? Why? They've diverted away from jammy, like raspberry flavour jammy dodgers. Okay. Okay. So jammy dodgers or TARDIS self-destruct buttons if you're that geek. What? It's a Doctor Who thing. Matt Smith gets on board a, a, a ship with a load of Daleks. Mm -hmm. Right? And he's got a jammy dodger and he goes, it's a TARDIS self-destruct button. And they scan it go, that seems to be a biscuit way. It's a jammy dodger, but I had you fooled. TARDIS self-destruct buttons. Anyway, they brought out a new flavour. Ooh! Yeah. Apple and blackcurrant. Oh. Oh. Oh, you see? Oh. oh. Apple and blackcurrant does go quite nicely together. It does. Um, so I bought some. Okay. Yeah, and I thought I'd give them a bit of a try. After everything that you fed me over this show, I, f I feel I'm looking out today. Why? Well, we've had dubious things before. They, they look the same. Hmm. No, that sounds cool. They're good. Do I get one? No, I said for me to try. He's so mean to me. Well, so mean. What do you mean I'm mean to you? You're just eating all the jammy dodgers to yourself. I'm not. I'm eating one jammy dodger and putting them away. This is called self-restraint, you see? What? I've Would you like to try... four pounds. Yeah, only because you dropped your wallet down a sink. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to try? I would love to try a jammy dodger. A whole proper jammy dodger. Hang me a minute. <laughs> All right then. Hi. Thank you. All right, snatchy. Let, 
Let me see if this is all worth all the hype. Mmm. 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 They're all right. They're not that good. Mmm. Mmm. Just a different flavour of jam. Mmm. Mmm. But I was letting it ruminate on my tongue. It's a f biscuit. It's a new dietary experience. Culinary experience, I should say. Definitely not dietary. <laughs> Well, thank you for that, Mike. It's uh, quite an enjoy... Okay, don't let me get away with the rest of the packet, then. No, you know why that is, don't you? Well, at least some people are helping me with my diet journey. I do appreciate it. Uh-huh. I didn't go to the gym this morning, Mike. Couldn't be bothered. I could be bothered. I just had trouble with at the gallery. Yeah. Anyway. They don't ruin your life. They do. You just turn them off. They do. No, they don't. They're trouble. Anyway, throw to break. I'm not feeling about minutes I feel yet. Oh, really? Walk up there, look. See, isn't it? Well, you've got that all this, but anyway. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't make it longer. <laughs> Trying to just, yeah. I'll just wait for you to finish. Uh, I'm not very good at coping with things mm. in my mouth. I've heard. Mm. How long have you been single for now? 15 years? I've never had a boyfriend. That's all from the buzz this week. And because Mike's stuffing his face, stick around as coming up we will have a game to play in our game of the week. Welcome back, and yes, you are watching Chewing the Cud, you lucky people. We're going to play a little game, and this one is for a man who once got something very interesting stuck in his fly. It's Mike. It was a button up, it doesn't really count. I could have chopped off a bollock. Game of the week. So, I believe we've got a new game, Mike. We do. Do you know what the new game is called? No, I'm all excited and a quiver. I told you in the lift what it's called. What? I told you in the lift what it's called. Oh, the audience don't know that. Uh, so, I need you to answer that question. So, what's it called, Mist? <laughs> I've forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not the fact that the audience don't know, it's the fact you don't know that. I, I'm, I'm getting to a certain age now. I'm, I'm, I'm getting losing... to a certain age. Oh, you're mean you are. I believe the game is called Myth or No Myth. Yeah, correct. It's almost like it's almost your name. OK, so I'm going to read you out a factoid and you have to tell me whether it's true or false. So OK. Truth or, or, or myth? Myth or no myth? Yeah. But without the list, because that's offensive. So, the, I, you get to pick a letter, mm -hmm. and your letters are basically T R U T H M Y F. So it's truth or myth. Okay. Yeah, so pick a letter out of those two words. M. 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 Okay. M is myth. M is health. Health, okay. Health. Blind people have better hearing than sighted people do. Is that truth or myth? I. I think that's supposed to be a myth. I think that's actually true because they've got less busy stuff so they can concentrate on the hearing better. That's a myth. Oh, okay. Yep, yeah, you're wrong. Um, <laughs> right. Pick another letter. Uh, 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 um, why? Because otherwise I don't know which question. No, I mean the letter Y. Oh, right, oh. the letter Y. Okay. Um, there are more plastic flamingos than real ones in the USA. Oh, um, after Trixie has done a motel, I'm absolutely sure that's true. It's true. There are more plastic flamingos. Yep, you can blame Trixie Mattel for that entirely, I believe. Yeah. I think Trixie Mattel does them ironically. <laughs> I don't think so, not on your Nelly. Mm. They genuinely love them. Anyway, um, before... Well, in between the break, you actually commented my new trainers. You liked my new trainers. Yeah, you do actually have nice new trainers. They have. They obviously haven't arrived from uh, Timu. No, they haven't arrived from Timu. They've come from Wish. Oh, God. I would never trust somebody who shops at Wish. You don't trust yourself? I don't shop at Wish. I'm not giving anything to the Chinese overlords. Not even my personal data. I submit and comply to you, my Chinese overlords. <laughs> Please keep giving me cheap fashion. <laughs> right, next letter. 
Um, ah, please. Ah. Ah. Okay, this one is world. Ooh, world. According to the Bible, or Bible. Oh. Adam and Eve had two children, Cain and Abel. Yes. Is that truth or myth? Uh, that's true. No, it's a myth. They were the first two children. <laughs> oh, as in it's a myth they only had two? Yeah. Oh, uh, OK. That, that was a bit deceptively worded. Correct. <laughs> Eve wasn't even the first woman. Next letter? Mm. Yeah, I, I, I'd like a T. Which one? First, second, or third? Ooh, um, I'll have, I'll have, I'll have a third T. A third T. Mm -hmm. Health. Ooh, okay. During Ramadan in 2000, mm. McDonald's in Saudi Arabia donated a proportion of every sale to its Palestinian children's hospitals. Wouldn't that be a bit tight? Because there won't be many sales during Ramadan. They'd donate all of five p. Well, no, because Ramadan, you can't eat during sunlight hours. It doesn't stop being open later. You break your fast during Ramadan. Well, yeah, I get that, but who's going for a McDonald's to break their fast? Mm, people. Hmm. I, I, I think that's a myth. It's actually true. Ooh. That, that's a surprise. Yeah. Would you like to pick another letter? Um, I'd like a second T, please. Second as in you're choosing T again, or second as in not the first, but the second one? Uh, as in the second T. Second T. Mm -hmm. Okay. Life. Oh, oh life. life. Go and eat a piece of toast. Oh. Donald Duck, his middle name mm -hmm. is Funtleroy. Oh, I th and that's got to be true. You'd think that, but it's true. Yay! I got one right. Finally. <laughs> it's easy, right. I'm very gullible. I believe all of these myths. I know you are. Did you know if you spell orange backwards, it spells gullible? Really? <laughs> Can I have my third T, which will be T number one? <laughs> you fell for it. I, I, I understand the concept of a gag. Uh-huh. Yeah. Of course you do. Life. Oh, life. That's a very old song. France mm. are the reigning Olympic cricket champions. Do they even play cricket? Is it not croquet? They use baguettes and rolls <laughs> of brie and boules. <laughs> Nor the, ba the bales and little breadsticks. Yeah. No um, I don't think that's true, no. It is actually true. What's with the face? Well, it's the French. I always maintain it's not, it's not racism if it's the French. Moving on very quickly. Um, pick a letter, you've got a U, a H or a H. Oh, um, I, I, I'd like H, please. The first one. First H. First H. From Steps. World. The Statue of Liberty was modelled on a black woman and was originally intended to be a tribute to the heroic contributions made by black civil soldiers in the American Civil War. Well, I, I, I know it was done by the French. Mm -hmm. Just before uh, they surrendered. I think that might be true. No, it's a myth. I'm doing terribly at this game. Mm. I've only got one right. Can we go back to doing the song songs again in the kazoo? Yeah, if you can play the kazoo, we'll do that. Right. <laughs> you are H. Um, I want you. I don't blame you. I'm amazing. <laughs> Celebrity. Oh, OK. Paula Yates. Yes. Her first media job was as Sooty's press agent. I think that could be true. Do you think it could be true? I think that could be true. That would be brilliant if it's true. It was true. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. But then um, she was set for um, blowing <laughs> in a bizarre. <laughs> that's not true. She was doing it off it. Right. Your last <laughs> it's a puppet. <laughs> Pop into fisting. Right. Last H. And this is crime. Ooh. A 30-year-old newscaster in America named Chris Chubbock, love his name, produced a gun and shot herself 
live on TV after a technical problem prevented her from broadcasting a story as scheduled. Oh, I don't think anybody would take a job in TV that seriously. Definitely not in this show. <laughs> to be fair, there's been plenty of times I've wanted to blow my brains out on this show. Um, plenty of times I've encouraged it. <laughs> uh, I think that's probably true. Sadly true. Okay, so we've got time for a bonus round. Oh, go on. Two. I quite like this game, yeah. even pick, though I'm doing terribly. Do you get to pick all the letters again? So which letter would you like to pick this time? Uh, I want more T. You want more T first, second or third T? Uh, 30. Not 30. I've been 30 for 20 years. Oh, that's mean and not true. During Ramadan in 2002, the US Air Force dropped empty food packages as part of their war effort in Afghanistan. They're not supposed to be eating! Yeah, that's just an insult! Empty food packages. Empty. 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 That can't be true. It's not true, no, that's a myth. Um, absolute nonsense. Exactly. Even though I'm not falling for that, I'm not stupid. I had to replay that in my head, I thought you said absolute nonce. Okay, go on, give you I'm another I'm going to say that and point to myself. I know. I'm going to give you another bonus letter, what would you like? Oh, you. Okay. Celebrity. Bob Geldof. That was Bob Geldof. Oh, God, we're going through, like, celebrity 90s love triangles. Who's next? I mean, what's his face from NXS? No idea. His first job in Britain was a carpenter on the set of the soap opera Crossroads. Nah, I don't think that's true. Are you sure? I think he was probably picking potatoes. It's not true, no. It's a myth. I wonder where that myth came from. Same as all of the rest of out of your ass, but that's nothing. this one. <laughs> Done now. Well, that was a very fun game. But stick around as next we have Mike in Crafty Queens. Welcome back to Chewing the Cud. And now we get to make something to make your world smell divine. It's Crafty Queens. I, I don't know why there's potpourri in the pocket of this tap bar, but there is. Anyway. That's not potpourri. No, it is potpourri. Anyway, um, we often comment about the state of the world and how it smells. Mm -hmm. Bad. Um, Especially in this studio. Mm -hmm. um, but we've, we've tried to get you to have a wash, it doesn't work. So what we're going to do is we're going to produce something that's going to continually leave a, a, a pleasant aroma behind. Like one of my farts? No, a pleasant aroma, not the smell of fetid death. Um, so the first thing we need to do is we need to extract the smell from something. So I have given you a can of premium air freshener. Ooh. Okay. And where air freshener? No expense spared on this show. Well, no, because they're on two for one. Um, what way air fresheners work is because they expel particulate matter into the, the atmosphere. Right? Globules. Little drops of little drops of strongly smelling fragrance. Okay. Mm -hmm. What we want to do is we want to milk that fragrance. You want me to milk an aerosol? I do. But the way we're going to do it is we're going to take some lessons from the youth of the world and use a balloon to do so. Oh, you've been hanging out on naughty street corners in Manchester, haven't you? I have. So what you want to do is you want to... I want to stretch You want to stretch a bit. your balloon the, over the, the nozzle. The balloon's a bit tight. It will be a bit tight, but you just want to seal over the hole, right? This is giving me flashbacks. Is it? And then what you're going to do is we're going to press the, the button on the, the mm -hmm. thing, right? And you need to hold it still. So we need to... Oh, no, I've missed the hole. This is a bit of an art form more than anything. Oh, gold. Okay. Oh! You can just try holding it as well. There we go. So what we're doing there is... This the really air... is giving me flashbacks when, when the material I'm trying to stretch over the cylinder is... Uh... Not not big enough for the job. Okay. Well, what you want to do is you just want to... You really just want to get the liquid out so you can pour it on your plate. So as you can see, that it takes a, but a few seconds to... Ooh. Okay. 
Oh, oh, there's a bit of a dribble. There you go. So emptying liquid out of a rubber thing. Yeah. You're used to that, right? Again, flashbacks. Uh-huh. From memories. What what flavour have you got? Um, uh, a pure linen. Oh, okay. I have Ooh, got. It's actually quite nice. Yeah, I've got sensual sandalwood and jasmine. Oh, look at you all hip, hippie and hemp. Yeah. So that's the fluid with the fragrance in. Lovely. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we want to make that so, so we can stick it on something. So we've got some paint for you. Okay. And you want to pop a little bit of paint into your fluid. Just a just a, a glob. Just a little drop. Well, there we go. No, a little bit more than that. A bit more than that. Okay. Okay. Like like that amount. Oh, oh that that's that's a dollop. Okay, a dollop then. Okay, and then we're going to mix our paint with the liquid that we've just expunged. Okay. Expunged. Oh, there's a word. So you've got that's, a little spread. Look at you when you're reading your dictionary. Yeah. So, what you don't want to do is use the spreader, okay? Um, I already am using the spreader, you fool. I know. Okay, so there we go. So there we have some lovely smelling paint, because paint doesn't necessarily smell lovely. No, not necessarily. Okay. But if you sniff that now... Oh! What's wrong there? What's with the face? That, 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 that's my face of pleasure. Oh. Hmm. You know, sometimes you ask why you're single. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to pop that to one side for a moment. Okay. okay? Oh. Because the, the it's actually going to get a little bit thicker as okay. the, the the liquid that we've expulged. expulged. Um, it's not actually a word expulged, but I'm using it. Um, expunged, I think. Expunged. No, because I wasn't using before. sponge. Um, expelled was the word I was looking for. Um, that's going to just naturally just a little bit of a, a dissipate. Okay? Okay. So that's one side for a minute. We're, you now have a sheet of paper, okay? We, and and I can see other things. Yeah, but the first thing I need you to have is the paper. Okay. Okay. This is going to be your canvas that's going to smell lovely, that you're going to hang in your, your bathroom. We're doing potato prints, aren't we? We are going to use a potato to make patterns. <laughs> I've not done this since primary school. Uh-huh. And as I keep telling you, that's all that Crafty Queens is. So now, carefully with your knife, mm-hmm. make a, cut your potato into half. Okay. So you have a flat edge. I'll go lengthway so I've got a big, big surface area. Okay. There we go. Did I say to do that on the paper? I don't think I did. Um, I'm trying to keep the set clean. Okay. Because I'm very diligent and don't want the gallery to shout at me. Okay. And now what you want to do is you want to carve a pattern in there. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and remember that your pattern is the raised bit. So you're working in negative form. Uh-huh. I, I understand the principle. It has been a while. Okay. What pattern are you going to go for? Ooh, I'm going to try a pentagram. Okay, that's brave. Having seen your skills before, Crafty Queens? Oh, uh, yes, but I, I have some actual artistic skills that you don't see in, uh, in, in Crafty Queens. Uh-huh. Because I'm talented. I didn't say you weren't talented. I, I'm being very careful because they've given me a, a scalpel. But, and and potato flesh is very much like skin flesh when you, you're starting to cut with a scalpel. Well, it is giving me flashbacks. You keep saying that. <laughs> keep getting flashbacks. <laughs> like in the break, we were talking about finding porn in a wood. Well, that's that's how we did it in the 80s. 90s for me. What? You get angry at me because you're older than me. I get angry at you because you constantly try to remind me that oh, you're no, younger no, than me, I could, I... which I still do not believe is true because I'm a youthful beauty. OK, so you let me know when you're done cutting your potato shapes. See, some people would actually believe I was born in the 90s. Yeah, and then you just... But you have to remember not to stroke a guide dog. <laughs> They're not pets. They're working dogs, OK? You are so horrible at being to me. And you come back for more. It says more about you than it does about me. But, yeah, um, so I'm, I'm, I'm chopping away here to make shapes out of my potato. How are you getting on? I'm doing quite well, thank you very much. This might be the first... Crafty queens that you've instructed me on, where um, uh, there might be a success. Okay, again, says more about you than it does about me. Mm. 
Okay. I, I think we'll beg to differ. Uh-huh, and you do beg a lot, apparently. Anyway, so once you've got your shapes, you're going to just drop it, drippy, droppy, drop it into your painty, smelly, lovely. Like this. Okay. Tap off the excess. And then just on your paper, do a nice little pattern. Mm. Okay, which, what, 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 what did you go for? So I have gone for primary shapes that will make a better shape. So I, I've gone for a little, like a little tombstone effect, but it's making a lovely little daffodil. Because I've got yellow paint. What are you, what have you gone for? I've gone for this star. Ah. Oh. So yeah, and then... Not too bad. You know, say about self-praise being no praise at all, right? <laughs> I am quite impressed with this compared to some previous endeavours we've done on Crafty Queens. Okay. You really shouldn't be. <laughs> but... Now, the reason why I've gone for yellow and a daffodil is mm. because this will look work well in the kitchen. Well... We film this in, in a, a love, wonderful place called Islington, which is full of uh, other artists and creatives. I'm sure if we put this up in the shared kitchen space that all of these wonderful creatives use, they will laugh at us. They will get the smells and go, oh, that smells lovely. It's normally after you've been in that we get the smells. Mm. I, I've given it some leaves. So yeah, there we go. So now when that dries... It'll be scented. Right. It will smell lovely and it will radiate the smell because it's in the paint's been infused with the fragrance. So I'm just going to do a little flourish. Okay, and while you do your flourish, remember to everybody, if you can't get any peen or any vagine or anything in between, you too should be a crafty queen. So you're impressed with that then? Um, I, I'm impressed with, with my endeavours. OK, so you're, you're impressed with that? Well, considering it's been... For 30 years. 30 years since I probably did this last, I, I, I do feel that uh, if, if uh, Tony Hart was still on TV, this would get in the gallery. Or alive. Can I ask a question? Yes? I have managed to do that with barely a drop on me. You look like you've been fingering Smurfs. Well, I like to get involved in my arts. And his art is fingering Smurf, apparently. <laughs> but, yeah, that's almost the end of the show for now. Remember to join us on our social media at The Could TV in all the usual places. Thank you for watching and we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. Dead. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome, isn't it? Awesome. Not doing it in here. <laughs> Dean's arse muscles tensed up when I saw that come out. I heard him do it. He stopped as soon as he saw that. <laughs>